it's a brilliant day and a fantastic three speeches. And how I could follow those, I think, is just impossible. But I wanted to start with a big thank you. We've heard a lot, and I'm going to come back to His Excellency's uh, very, very profound comments about the contemporary world in which we live. I want to come back and focus on those with, with some depth. Um, but we've heard also about this amazing city and the amazing congregation within the city in the discussions around that. Um, and I was asked earlier, as I often am, why are you doing all this, Mike? You know, why have you got a centre going at Coventry University in such areas? And why did you invite what's now my good friend, your Excellency from the United Nations? What's it all about? Now, if you sit as you have, global leaders, colleagues, community, representatives, other academics, and listen to the words of the High Representative, the arguments and passions of our city leaders and our church leaders, you don't need to ask the question. This is a time of great trauma, a time of great change, and we need, in all our various roles, I believe, to mobilise the energies we have, the competence we have, the capabilities we have, and to put them to good use in the way that you've heard. So we should never have to explain why we do what we do. We do what we do because it is an essential requirement for responsible citizens in this funny old place that we live. So the thank you I want to start, this doesn't happen, these sorts of events. We don't attract such senior people from international organizations <coughs> and mobilize such passion in city leaders and church leaders without hard work of my colleagues in the centre. Laura Sullivan, Broccoli, uh, Aurelie Brockenhoff, and Sarah Perry from the city have worked to create a day which is, we're in the middle of, it is quite amazing. And I thank them straight away before I say anything else. It's their energies and their passions which mobilize the big people, which mobilize the great contributions that we've heard. And they've been uh, added to by many others in the city who've opened their doors to the uh, High Representative and to us today. <coughs> so a big thank you. Your Excellency, your comments were very profound. I knew they would be when we invited you. It's, it's a humbling experience to sit and to hear from someone who is so engaged and so well networked in an international organization who could be doing many things but has chosen to do this. He's actually understated the contribution that he's made and I want to make this very clear to us all. The Alliance of Civilization came from a very traumatized world, from a moment in our history when evil people sought to disrupt relations as they were developing in our post-war years. Almost an impossible task was set to the world, to the institutions within that world, to the communities that were changing, and to the international organizations. Almost an impossible task. The Alliance was born out of a belief in hope, as His Excellency reminded us, from a Muslim and Christian country who said we must take action. Five or six years later, we're moving into a new chapter with new leadership, refreshed commitment to that same journey. His Excellency has added to the debates we've already had within the Alliance since it was formed by drawing on the world of sport as a tool, as a lever, to help with some of the challenges he referred to in his vision of the future. He's drawn in the arts as a powerful way of communicating between those of difference, creating common ground that's about visual appreciation, that's about literature, that's about uh, the creation of imagery. And he's reminded the international organizations of which he had influence that this isn't just about talk, this is really about generating action. When you and I met for the first time, Your Excellency, you stressed this notion that you repeated today, that it is a combination of city leaders, of 
third sector organisations, of international organisations, of the private sector, and above all, institutions that are committed to learning like our own, and capacity building, and the energies of the young global leaders that I can see many of you here, part of our own families. It's that combination that will give us hope for the future, to give John's trajectory, to give Martin's certainty where we can. Excellency, you talked about three big issues in your profound contribution, and I wanted to refer to them very quickly. Because they are at the centre of the work, I'm going to always have a plug for our new centre, the, the new centre, the new university's commitment to excellent research with impact must take on in this area. You talked first about Europe, and John, you've referred to that as well in your comments. Europe is in a very strange place at the moment, as we all know. We're going to the polls this week. At a time of toxic debate about movement and migration, at a time of fragmentation and people wanting to pull back from the collaboration and cooperation, however imperfect, that's been achieved since the Second World War. Europe is not just the, ba the perceived battleground of faith of Islam and the West, whatever that means. It's also a place where many different peoples of different beliefs and perceptions have come together seeking peace, never wanting to return to the traumas that led to the destruction of our cathedral, but also who wanted to build prosperity and growth in the way that Martin referred to in terms of the common ground that will really help us deal with difference when we mobilize assets for the common good. Your Excellency, you also talked about modernity, about this very special time that we're in. We're in a time characterized, as Martin said, by the pace of change, by uncertainty, by a lack of predictability. And we're finding it all quite difficult. And sometimes we find a proxy for our own failings when we see the world is changing too quickly to keep up. When we see a world that is unpredictable and uncertain and not delivering the security for our families that we need, we seek out a proxy. And often, as you've reminded us, the proxy becomes the other. It has to be the other. It has to be our new neighbour that we didn't expect that all of a sudden arrived. It had to be, as one of our politicians said, people on, on my train who are speaking other languages. We need something that helps us process our own inability to deal, I think, <coughs> with the pace of change and modernity and contemporary change. And the answer is not, in my view, that we should reject modernity. We have to embrace it. It will not go away. We have to deal with it. And again, your exhortation to the universities, to the schools, to the colleges of the world, we must help build capacity and grow confidence in people to deal with this issue of the pace of change. And finally, Your Excellency, you talked about the future and the risks and the challenges that we face together. And I'm sure that none of us, even together, with all our commitments and interests, know the answers to the problems that we've cited. But we know they're important. One of the things in the last uh, period in my career that's become very clear, and again, it's why I'm sold on the notion that we should study, we should be scholars, we should commit ourselves to collecting evidence, to be passionate in our work so that we provide policymakers with evidence that helps make a difference. One of the things I'm convinced about is that there are one or two things where there isn't unpredictability, which is a dead certainty about the future of peaceful relations on this crowded planet. One is that we have to remove abject poverty, that we have to fight a world that generates such dismal existences for so many people. The fight against poverty is accepted is debated, we don't succeed, but at least we're signed up to it, I think. 
climate change, the second big threat. We're very good at destroying our own existence. It's debated. We disagree about it. Martin's notion that we're not going to agree about everything. But it's up there. People sign up to it as a major threat to our peaceful relations in the future. So those two big legs of my three-legged stool are well accepted. Now, one thing that the Alliance of Civilizations, <coughs> and now under its refreshed leadership, His Excellency, is trying to give us a third leg to this stool. And that is the notion and the challenges faced with cultural diversity. If we fail to live peacefully together, for whatever reason, we will have the same consequences as if we fail to deal with abject po poverty, absolute poverty, and we fail to deal with the challenges faced in the changing climate. These three, <coughs> I think, are non-negotiables, and I'm delighted that the Alliance continues to argue for the presence of cultural diversity as a challenge. The UN World Day, I was asked by a journalist earlier today, what's that all about, Mike? Isn't there another World Day of something? Well, every day is a World Day for cultural diversity in my book. Every day of the year. Because it's an inevitability, it's an unavoidable reality, and we must deal with it. I've probably taken more than my 10 minutes. Just to finish by uh, a major thank you to His Excellency in a very busy schedule. Um, I think we know that we deserve his presence. I think we know that this is exactly the right place for him to be. I'm really delighted that you've come. My, my personal thank you as well as that of the university. The university is walking the talk in this area. The investment in our research agenda, which will allow us to recruit more talent, we've got plenty already, to look at the key issues that we're focused on is actually a university statement, not one that rests in the centre for trust, peace and social relations. It rests in Coventry University, which is an important collaborator within Coventry, as we've seen. So thank you all for coming. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your words. And uh, I think we're now going to retire, although that's your job to tell us, um, for reception in the hobby. Thank you very much. <laughs>